So uh, for the rest of the session, till noon or however long it takes, we'll take a look at uh, some of the best practices using Horizon. Uh, I want to focus in on using the mobile app and some of the new features that we've added this year. So we'll get into that. I'm going to talk about some report writing tips and a little bit about inspecting. So, um, you know, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, you guys are the inspectors. You're going to do as much or as little as you need, and we'll cover that as well. Um, I will have a copy of Amy's presentation on the business and the report writing slides. So if you folks want a copy, um, we'll just ask you to put in your name and your email there. And uh, I think 20 people here are using Horizon. Is everybody using Horizon? Okay. So we're we're all uh, we're all users. So I, I um, you know that uh, just. Add your name and email that way. I know we'll send the uh, the presentation to. Um, so we talked about the office efficiency this morning. Did that helped a lot of folks out. Did you guys learn some new stuff and and uh, hoping to go back and apply it? If there's any other questions, uh, I'm going to be talking about the profile section later on as well, so we can get into some of that setup. And then uh, for. For the rest of this, uh, for the next hour and a half or so, we'll look at the goals and some time-saving features using the app. And I'll talk about insight. How many people have insight? How many people don't know what the heck I'm talking about? Okay. We'll, uh, we'll make sure everybody knows what that app is and what it does. Um, so as I mentioned, we'll take a look at why we write reports. I think it's important to set some expectations on your report writing and discuss what our goals are, what we want to collect. Because uh, a lot of this depends, a lot of your time, a lot of your efficiency depends on what you're putting in there. And I see a lot of times, you know, with, uh, with inspectors, a lot of redundancy, a lot of little things, you know, some places people overdo it, some people, some places people don't do enough. So we'll do, uh, we'll talk a, a little bit uh, about that content. After all, we want to make you look good. Um, that's our goal. Market your business. Make sure we look good for clients and agents. Um, we know that others are going to see your inspection report, so people are going to be sharing that around. Um, you know, we want to be able to help manage, uh, help clients manage their home and make that decision. Obviously, you want to reduce your liability. All that's built into Horizon. I think you folks are already using the implications and things like that that are automatically included in your report. Uh, we talked about reducing time. That's everybody's goal. It takes too long to write reports. Um, you know, I can't find things. And how do I do this? And I want to be able to answer and streamline, answer those questions and streamline that process. Uh, improving consistency. This is a big one for us at Carson Dunlop. We have 15 inspectors. We want them saying the same thing the same way every time. So we know that if I went uh, in the process room, I'd get a different answer from each inspector. So it's, it's difficult keeping and maintaining consistency and having that, uh, that uh, you know, control over your company. So if you're looking at expanding and growing, having a central database and central management helps manage other inspectors in your company. Um, less is more. I'll be talking about this a lot when we're doing the, uh, the sample report. Obviously, the more information, the more time you're taking to annotate photos, take notes, um, you know, manage your documents, is more report writing time. And uh, I get this question a lot. I have 80 pictures in my report. Why is it taking me so long? Because you have 80 pictures. You know, a lot of times those photos, uh, when you look at a report, if you've got more than two photos for an issue, uh, if you've got photos for descriptions uh, or limitations, those are probably things you don't need to put in your report. So we'll look at saving time. Uh, clients like clear, simple reports. Agents like clear, simple reports. When we like our competitors to say, I want that kind of report, I know that I was talking earlier and uh, I know that uh, one inspector is pretty happy with the fact that 
His is the best looking report in this area. So this is a marketing tool. Uh, there are a lot of good companies, a lot of big companies that have pretty crappy reports. They won't change anything because that's the way they've always done things. And the last person they talked to said they had a good, you know, the report was fine. And that's all they hear. You ask a client about your report three or four months after the inspection, you're going to get a little bit more feedback and more of an honest opinion. Everybody's happy right then and there. Ask them a little bit later and you'll see that, uh, you know, a little bit more honesty coming out. Uh, we just talked about inspector, multi-inspector firms needing to be consistent. Uh, too many custom notes. Again, this is uh, one of those things that affects your consistency. If uh, you're not using Horizon, selecting the items and allowing that bullet point format to say the story for you, um, and you're repeating those as notes, you're probably spending too much time typing it. I see a lot of people that say, here's the problem, here's where it is, and uh, what to do about it, and then they type that same note in. They just picked it all on the list in a couple of seconds, and they spent twice as long typing the note. And it's redundant. So a couple things to be aware of. Um, so our reports, when you report writing, of course you need a scope and a contract. Uh, those are all required by the standards of practice. Um, it helps adjust expectations for the client so they know what is or what is not part of an inspection. Um, descriptions and limitations, again, these are required by the standards of practice. You've got to have them in there. Uh, I went through the ASHI standards of practice and I think there's about 35 to 40 required items that they say you have to have in each and every report. So those are mo mostly descriptions and limitations. So depending on how you read those uh, or interpret it, you might want to add more or less. But that's my starting point. So we'll talk about the descriptions and limitations. Really, it's just identifying material um, or how we perform the inspection. There's not a lot of effort when we're building a report. So I'm going to ask you guys, don't spend a lot of time on this. And when we go through our sample, we'll see, I'll show you what I mean. Uh, defects and recommendations. This is where you're spending most of your time, which is great. This is why you're doing, why you're a home inspector. This is the value you're bringing to that client. What's the problem? What item? Where's the problem? Um, an action item. What should they do about it? I know that tasks or action items, um, you know, uh, give those people just a, a little bit of idea whether they're repairing it, replacing it. Uh, implications. This is, in the standards of practice, it says unless it's self-evident. We include implications automatically with everything. It helps limit your liability. It helps you meet the standards because most people don't put in, include implications at all. So, and a lot of times, implications, you might argue, are more important than the actual issue. Because I can tell somebody, or you could tell somebody that, you know, they, they are missing a GFI receptacle, and big deal. Until you say that, you might get shocked, or I kill somebody, or, you know, there, there could be a problem there that you, you know, the implication will give them a little more sense of urgency. So just a little argument for uh, putting implications in your reports. Uh, photos, some people might say, used to say that uh, this is really unoptional. I think this is pretty mandatory now. Everybody, uh, anybody not using photos? I know two inspectors, big time inspectors in our group. Three. Three. And it's, you know, it, it lends itself to change. They've been doing something for uh, a process for a certain period of time and you know, they're probably satisfied and comfortable with what they're doing. But I, I can say that adding photos to your report adds a ton of value. Taking photos because you can always keep them with the system. Remember, Horizon stores those photos in there. I think each report has a maximum of 200 plus or minus uh, photos per inspection report. So that's 200 photos you can store with that report. You can choose to use as many as you like in the report itself, Horizon will still store all of them. So you keep everything in one place. Your photos are archived. 
So if you need to take a picture of the storage in the basement to prove that you couldn't inspect that foundation, just take a photo and keep it on file. You don't need to put it in your report, but you have a record of it. Uh, time frame and priorities, these are arguably the same. I like putting a time frame, it just gives clients a sense of urgency. I think a lot of inspectors identify the defect and the location and what to do about it. Click, 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 that's three clicks to, to build up your recommendations. So minimally, you're getting, you're identifying the problem, where it is and what to do about it. And then if you want to go that added step, add a photo. We Really, I don't know if there's very much need to add notes too often. Uh, we talked about costs this morning and maintenance tips. Uh, these are add-ons in Horizon that's in included in that reference link section. Uh, client questionnaire, this is something we do at Carson Dunlop. We have a system built in or linked with uh, Horizon called Listen360. It is a survey tool that sends out automatic surveys to your clients after the inspection. It asks them one question: Would you recommend? Would you recommend us to, um, you know, a family or a friend? And then, once they answer, they uh, it starts fishing for compliments. So those compliments now can be streamed to your website, streamed to Facebook. You can get them to, I think, Yelp and Google. I'm not sure if that's activated yet, but we know how powerful client testimonials are. That's an automatic stream. That feature costs 200 bucks a year. A lot of other services charge 100 to 200 bucks a month for those streamed uh, tools. As a Horizon user, you're getting a big discount. Um, bullet points and not sentences in the report. This is kind of evolved. We know, uh, Amy talked about millennials this morning, and we know that people are reading and use their, their phones their iPads, it's all mobile devices. People are accessing that information. They're getting more information faster than they ever have before. So if I'm forcing people to read big long narratives, I'm starting to slow them down. I'm not really giving them what they're looking for. I know some of my clients might like that, and there's nothing wrong with that. If you want to put in notes and have narrative, that's fine. But uh, I will tell you a lot of the feedback we get from clients, they like to be able to get that information quickly scan down the page and absorb what they need and then zero in on you know, where they need more, more time. And then, I love these new tools, uh, our Power Search and our Speed Write. Those are some new features that came out this year and I want to show you how best to use them using the mobile app on site as you're inspecting. So we, uh, my goal here is really to save you guys time and really make it easy. A uh, couple of things about the setup of the reports. Out of the box, and most of you probably um, are already using the default setup, so each system has a category for descriptions, limitations, then recommendations. Uh, we started to optimize that a little bit for a number of reasons. Uh, white space and clarity. People want to see the deficiencies first. They want to get an idea of what the issues are. We know that they're in a buying decision. When they're reading that report, what are the things that you found? We know that the descriptions and limitations are required by the standards of practice. Absolutely put them in there, but we put them lower importance. We put them after, after the uh, recommendations. And you get to see how that report uh, with the deficiencies, because deficiencies often have photos, all that sticks on one page and it starts to eliminate white space. I get that complaint a lot. Any software that builds a report will always have white space because it's got to calculate how much room do I have for the next item. And if there's not enough, it'll put it to the next page. So sometimes you get white space at the bottom. And it might be bigger if that's a photo and it calculates there's not enough room for that. So putting your deficiencies up front uh, help minimize and eliminate that. And I'll show you how to reorder and resort that. Uh, we like to rename these as well. We used to call it just uh, recommendations. Now, Carson Dunlop, we call it observations and recommendations. We don't call it deficiencies. Remember, we're, uh, we're solution providers. We don't like pointing out errors. We like to keep things positive. 
So we remove the word uh, deficiencies from our reports or recommendate, well, we combine it with observations, but we, that's what we call the, uh, the section now. So we're trying to provide some positive input. Um, sorry? Uh, summary, you can change the name of summary, the summary title page as well, like the summary page, but just the recommendations heading, you can, you can rename the headings. Um, so limitations at Carson Miller, we call it uh, inspection methods and limitations. So just a little bit more clarity to the client what it actually is. I'll show you where to do that in the back end on the profile. Again, this helps limit your liability. It's part of the standards of practice. Some of the things that uh, we need to include in the report. Uh, on the setup side, by default in Horizon, there's over 6,000 items in your database. And unless you've been using Horizon for a long time, unless you're familiar with the, maybe the um, you know, the old home inspection, uh, home, uh, home reference book in the checklist format. That's a lot of uh, items to try to figure out where they are and how to find them, especially in a digital program. Uh, out of the box, you've got 6,000 items to describe uh, issues and observations, uh, to identify system materials and inspection methods. We've tried to group that by uh, system and by the three categories, descriptions, locations, and recommendations. But I don't expect everybody to memorize where those things are or our terminology. Sometimes it's a little different than yours. Uh, and I don't expect that database to, out of the box, apply to everybody. It's meant to apply to North America, but down here in the south, I can hide probably 60-70% of the heating items and reduce and minimize, get that stuff out of the way. So we're not seeing all those categories. So it lets you focus just on the things that you're reporting on. You know, whether it be heating and cooling systems, plumbing systems, uh, if you don't see a lot of uh, boilers, uh, if you don't have uh, those inline uh, uh, water heaters, you can remove those so it doesn't interfere with your, you can just focus in on the things that you need. Uh, there is a tutorial on hiding, using show hide to hide stuff. And again, I'll email this uh, presentation so you can access that tutorial. Um, I don't want to get into that here. It's, it's, uh, it's easy to do, but I've got a lot of stuff to cover. And required items. Everybody knows what the required items <coughs> list is? So that's kind of your completion check in Horizon. We've uh, We've given you a tool to flag things that are required by the standards of practice. Describing the roof material, describing how you would perform the uh, inspection, describing the exterior uh, wall, you know, uh, wall surfaces and windows and, and so on. So we've just flagged it and made it required. I've done this already for you. It's already built into your system. So it should be all the required items by the standards of practice should already be flagged. You still have control to take some of those items off or add more items on there. Because I know people like to add more, um, more content or give clients a little bit more value. So, uh, you know, uh, life expectancy, for example. Some people like to include that on the water heater, the furnace. Uh, you can add those as required items. So you can turn those on or off. Why this is important is the completion check. So at the end of the inspection, I can hit a button that says required items. And any of those flagged comments, if they're blank, you get a, a list of items that you've missed. So it's dead easy for me to look at that list and say, go back and fill these in or skip them. It's under your control. This links up with our speed write feature, which I'll show you on the phone a little bit later on. I can go through that list in about five minutes. So instead of trying to navigate and find all those items across all those systems, I can just auto advance through them. So I put that question up there, how do you inspect? Um, inside out, top down, everybody has a system how you're inspecting. And 
you follow that system for every home. It helps you go through that process in a systematic way of inspecting the home, and it helps maintain your consistency so you don't miss things. Because you know that if I went through this process, I've covered all the things I need to in inspecting that home. You don't go back and forth between rooms. You don't go up and down the stairs. Nobody wants to get a workout during their inspection. So there's, this, there's a reason why people have systems, to make it easy, refine, and ensure that you've maintained your process. I like to apply that same process to reporting. Have a system to be able to go in and collect your data, populate it into the report, and using the mobile app in the field, is one of those ways. Remember, this app is just designed for data collection. It is not my business tool. It is not my work order tool. It's just letting me collect my information, get my findings in, and get out. Everybody's goal is to save time. Let's just focus in on getting the information on the report, not all the other stuff. Uh, I like to finalize on the laptop or the web. So, whether I'm using my iPad and opening up a browser to book inspections and run the business part or to publish and send that report out, um, or if I'm doing that on my laptop, that's what the website is for. Preview the report, generate it, and hit another button to send it out. So uh, these are some of the things that we'll take a look at next with our, uh, uh, as we go through the mobile app. When we're using the mobile app, and I'll cover all of these, uh, part of that process, take a title page photo first. Let's get a picture of the front of the house, something that you can use. And then when you're doing the inspection, go through your inspection process. Focus in on the details. Focus on the observations. What do you need to tell the client? As you're inspecting the home, you're going to remember the descriptions and the limitations. You can add them in later. But if I can start to run this process like an assembly line, put in all my recommendations, and then maybe at the end, go through and add all my descriptions and limitations because it's gonna be really fast. I don't have to add a lot of notes or photos. I can just select them. Then you can start to speed up your report writing. So it's really compartmentalizing some of the data and letting you save a little bit of time rather than going back and forth. I know a lot of people that will click on an asphalt roof and then they'll go over to recommendations and look for some deficiencies and then they'll flip back to flat roofing, then they'll flip back to recommendations and you're doubling your time, you're doubling the number of clicks, you're doubling the time that it takes to find that stuff. You don't have to do that. Uh, speed right at the end. We'll talk about the speed right tool because that's the auto advance that streamlines and gets all my descriptions and limitations in there. It's going to save all that clicking between systems and automatically advance to the next item in that list. So if you have 35 or 45 items, click, 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 click. I don't have to navigate. I'm just adding them on the fly. So let's try this out. Now, before I get, uh, get that app up and running, do you, uh, any questions on what I want to cover here or something else that you might want to see on the mobile app? The title page photo that you take. Yep. Well, that's. It could be any. You could use any description, right? If you. You can. Yeah, I'll, I'll right. show. Let's, let's go through that right now. Let's uh, take a look at that. I've got, I've got my phone up here. So I'm just projecting my, uh, my iPhone. So 75% of you guys are using Apple, so you're familiar with this. Whether you're using an iPad, that's fine as well. It's all going to work the same. I've got a couple of inspection photos here. I'm going to put this in. And I've got the front of the house. I've got a shot of some of the shingles here. I'm going to open up the app. And I'm just going to hit the menu button. Do a quick full sync. Actually, bear with me a second. I'm going to, let's see. Let's go to this work order. I'm just gonna click write the report. So you see what I'm doing here. I'm just unlocking that from book status. As soon as I click write report, I can write that on any device. 
So it bounces report writing in the top corner. I can open up on, through my browser. I can work on the, uh, on the report on my laptop or my iPad. But in this case, I'm just going to flip back to Horizon and Horizon Mobile. I'm going to hit the menu at the bottom and I'm going to do a full sync. The full sync, just to, for clarity, I'm going to be, I'm going to cover some typical stuff, but I, I think it's, uh, you know, for clarity, it's nice to know what's going on in the back end. Uh, it's a push and a pull. It's pulling down new information, at the same time it's pushing my photos and my notes back up to the cloud, so everything's back up. As long as it's on the cloud, you're covered. There's some automatic stuff going on in the back end, but this is a, it ensures all my pictures and everything is, are there. I've got my new inspection for West Delaware, and I can tap on that. You guys see that okay? And I've got my system here on the mobile app. So I can go through the system. If I'm using this like the website, I have to go into a system, select a description or a recommendation, go up and down my list, find what I'm looking for, I have to expand it. Now I have to go through another list and describe what the porch is. Let's see, synthetic wood. Then I select it. So it's a lot of steps, it's a lot of clicks. If I can save that, all that typing and, and navigation, then hopefully I'm going to start to save you some time. If that's a recommendation, same thing. I have to go back, I have to go back again, and then I have to go into recommendations and drill down. So there's a lot of navigation. There's probably five or six clicks in and out, if not more. So in this case, I want to use Power Search. This is where Power Search comes in handy. Everybody's got a little magnifying icon in their app, and Power Search is just a search tool. It works like Google Search, it works like Yahoo and a lot of other search tools out there because we effectively copied what they're doing. Took the best out of those search tools. We made it multiple words, partial words, words in any order, so you can get to what you're looking for quickly. In this case, I've got my keyboard, I've got my microphone, title page. So right away it takes me to that item where I'm going to collect a title page. This just lets me take a photo or it's just a placeholder for my title page. So I want to get it into my report. I'm going to tap that and I can go uh, and select the item here, title page photo. And if I click that, I've selected it. If I click it again, I can take a picture. We've got a camera icon at the bottom. There's two camera icons. If you're using an Android, it's called Photos and Photos Plus. One takes a picture, the other one takes a picture and lets you put a circle or annotate it. I just like to get pictures into the report. When you're taking pictures with a mobile device, I like to use landscape mode. Let me just get back here. I'll tap uh, and pull up my camera. I like to put this in, there you guys are. I like to put this in landscape mode. Take a picture of you guys. If I want to use that, I just tap on use photo in the bottom corner and it puts it in with that item. If I want to take another photo, I'll just hit the camera icon again and we'll zoom in on this picture now. And now I've got a title page photo stored <coughs> in my mobile phone. So first thing I'm going to do, walk up the front of the house, do a search for title page, and add that photo and save it. I'll just hit the save button and we're in. Verizon's telling me I've got two items there. Let's see if I can optimize this a little bit. Okay. So a little bit of an overlap here, but I think you're going to get the idea. Um, I'm just going to hit back. So now I'm not even navigating. I'm not going through any of the systems. I'm just using Power Search. I'm going to hit the X to X this out. I can type in my next item, old shingles.
So there we go, roofing recommendations on flat. Uh, we got flat roofing, slope roofing. If they're old, old and worn out, there's a few different options. I like to do, when I'm doing a search, I like to put in what the issue is. Is it old, is it rusty, is it cracked, is it defective? So put in the defect and then the term or the item that you're looking for. In this case, roof, shingles, whatever the case is. Um, the more I type, the more specific it's going to be. So that's why I like to use little short abbreviations. It just saves me time typing. The other feature with this search tool is the tap and hold. So instead of selecting an item and having to drill in, I can do a tap and hold. And it gives me some options here. There we go. I can either add a photo, add a photo with an annotation, or just go right to the notes section. So in this case, I've identified what the problem is. I'm going to hit add a note because I want to select it. Because it's a recommendation, I want to put a location in, maybe a, a task. So I'll tap that item again, and I'll just say that the direction is throughout the roof. I'll say that the task is to repair or replace it. And then I'll hit next to the bottom corner. And let's go ahead and take a photo. This time I'll use the small photo icon. This is the annotation. So I can zoom in on our picture. So now that I've got that, I'll use it. It's saving that photo. Horizon's resizing and optimizing these pictures all the time. So you don't have to worry about how big the resolution is. It's being stored for you. But now I've got the option to add a red, white, large or small circle. And as soon as I tap on the picture, it drops it in there. And if I like that, I'll just hit save. I'll hit save again. And I've got my photo in here. So now I'm walking around the house. I don't want to be spending too much time hunting and searching where these things are. If I'm walking around the outside of this house, and, uh, or if I'm on the roof, and I see some other issues here, well, I want to go and talk about that patch jiggle. If you have an internet connection, you can use the mic, the, the voice to text option. Patched, asphalt, patched asphalt shingles, sure. I'll do a tap and hold, add a photo. I select my item, I'm adding a photo, use the picture and move on. We walk around to the back side of the house, we've got ponding, ponding. <laughs> this isn't always recognized by type of English. <laughs> so some of the things uh, you can notice, we don't have a defect for pounding, but I can see that. <laughs> And we can you know, always flip back and forth, ponding. I'm just going to put on the uh, modified bitumen roof. There we go. Ponding, modified bitumen roof. Tap and hold. So I'm walking around the house pretty quickly now, just selecting an item, taking a photo, collecting my information. I, don't, I can focus in on the client. I don't have to be playing with my software. People don't like to like it when you appear like you're always on your phone and ignoring them. So you can do what you need to do, get that photo in there. This time I'll just take a picture, we'll annotate this one. Photo. I'll use it. I'm going to use a white and a small circle. We'll identify a couple areas there, save it, move on. How do you change from the white to this package? Yeah, there's an option at the bottom that you tap. It just toggles, red, white, large circle. Is it only circles? It's only circles. It's meant to be simple, quick. I've had a lot of questions about arrows. Uh, the thing about arrows, you can tap on a picture. Which way do I want my arrow pointing? But when you get to the web, you can change that, right? You can change that on the web. So, not and in a lot of cases, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, not once, uh, not once saved, you can't change it. Can you on the mobile app, can you change? Because on, on the soft, on the desktop, 
you can add to it. So if you put a circle on there, you can add to it. Or if you just don't like the circles, do your annotation on the web with yeah. the arrows. So. Can you delete the circles? Uh, not once it's uploaded to the web. Uh, not once you've saved it. So at the time I'm working on that photo, I can undo those circles. But once I click save, it's on that photo. So if you don't save it, you don't put the circles when you're doing it on your laptop when you're on the web, you can put anything you want. Yeah. You know, and if you made a mistake and you added circles and you saved it, just take the picture again. So you've got it right there. So does it behoove one to sort of take a picture and do it with the circles, complete it, and then just take a, another picture so it's there if you want it? Sure. Horizon's going to save it and store it. So it's going to be tied with that report. Yeah, so you're always, remember, you've got a limit of 200. Damn. And it's on your phone without the circle, even if you put it into the report. I do it all the time. You go it's on your phone without a circle. Oh, so it's stored in your it's stored, it's stored in your report gallery. In an iPhone anyway. If you and I go to report and add photos from the gallery. From the gallery. Yeah. If when I make a mistake or do something. Will you show us how to do that? I can. I'll I'll, uh, I'll go through some more. You, know, you just took those pictures. Just they're saved in your phone photos. Yeah. Can you show us how to download them? Say we, what we're doing with uh, without having the circles, we can add that back in. Okay. Your phone. I can show that. So right now, whenever I take that photo and I save it, it's stored with Horizon. It's also being stored to your photo gallery. So that's important to know. Not everybody does that. So it's getting stored in two places. So from time to time on my phone, I have to go in and delete out all my inspection photos because I want space on here for all my uh, music that I like to load up there. That way I can go home on the plane and listen to some good tunes. So my preference is, is music rather than the photos. Um, we've got this in here, so modified bitumen. We took a picture of that. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and cancel that, do another search, pull up another slide here. Uh, we've got a couple more deficiencies. So as we're walking around outside of the house, there we go. We've, uh, we've got a few other issues. Um, so sagging lintel, cracked brick, downspouts are too close to the end of the building. Here's some short forms. So instead of sagging lintels and having to type the whole thing in, um, what, S-A-G, L-I-N. And I got 12 matches. So now I can go ahead and just zero in on uh, the exterior lintel sagging. Just tap and hold. I'm going to add a note because I like to put in the location. I'll tap on that again. Direction is on the north side. Um, floor level, say it's first floor. Task, uh, further evaluation of the structural guy. Maybe there's some other problems. And then we'll hit next. If we want to add more notes, I love using dictation. So if I tap in the notes field, I can pull up this big giant keyboard, which is still too small for my, uh, my fat thumbs. So I love just dictating. Setting lintels on the north side of house. So don't do what I just did. Don't select all those items and then repeat that as a note. <laughs> But for example purposes, I wanted to show you that uh, those comments went in there, and we've got uh, we need to make some spelling uh, some corrections here. Yeah, sorry, those are the notes, your personal notes, or the notes that would be on the report. Those are, those would be on the report. Okay. So that's linked with that recommendation. So I can add notes if I want. I can just dictate them in there. So but I also want to make sure that this is interpreting interpreting. What I'm saying correctly. So your narratives will be you'll be doing on desktop afterwards. Your your saved and your saved uh, narratives will be. Uh... So there's a feature in Horizon where yeah you have stored notes. This notes box on your on the website stores previous comments. It's not available on the phone. The phone's not smart enough to pull that stuff down. So you can go back to the website and pull up old notes and bring up auto comments if you have them. Otherwise, I like to just I like to put as few notes in the report as I as I mean, really, I've identified the problem, where it is, and I've added a photo. 
Do I need to tell the client any more? Is it helpful for the client? So think about that. Am I helping the client when I'm adding more notes? Or am I just forcing them to read an opinion? Sure. Sometimes our inspectors are guilty of that. They just want to see more. Everybody wants to you know, impress people or you know, show them how much we know, and sometimes that just confuses clients. Do you find it faster doing it this way than, than just taking the picture? And if you had to put a note in there right then so you won't forget doing that and then editing like the circles and all that stuff later? Because I do all my circles and arrows or whatever. I, if I put them on there, I do them when I'm editing on the... I find uh, that way faster. So if, they, if this was me, I'm just showing you some, ver some variety of collecting that information. If it was me, I'm just going to do the search. You know, in this case, let's go back and uh, hit the menu. Crack brick. Mm -hmm. Just type that in. So crack brick on exterior walls. I just I would just do my search, add a photo, select the issue, add a photo, and zero on that. And just go on to the next. And then go on to the next one. Once that's saved, I'm back to my next one. The downspouts are too close. Too close. Downspouts. There we go. Tap it only one match. Tells me how many matches are there are, so I can scroll up and down. Select, tap and hold, add a photo. <clears throat> so we've got our picture, we'll tap use photo and move on. So we just walked around the roof and exterior of the home. We got um, probably about four or five defects and our title page photo. I'll just save that. I'm using my software as little as I can, as I need to. Identify the problem, use the search to identify it. I don't want to be scrolling around looking for that information. That takes a lot of time. Remember, there's 6,000 items in there. Anybody know where most of those things are? Our inspectors at Carson Dunlop, they memorize that stuff. They know exactly where everything is. And they're fast, so they'll go and they'll navigate rather than use power search, which is perfectly fine. If you're comfortable doing that, or you just want to see what the other options are, by all means, we can go back and navigate and scroll through the list and see if there's better selections. But if you know what you want, you know, you can navigate there. Otherwise, I'm just going to use power search. A lot of times if I'm saying what I'm looking at, it'll take me right there. Right to the item. So when you use microphones, you can use internet connection. So generally speaking, our phones, regardless of where we are, they have that internet connection automatic. That's right. So it's going to use your data plan. Okay. So whether you're Android or Apple, in order for that microphone to work, that voice to text feature, it's not me, it's Apple or Android. It goes to the internet, interprets pounding, and then puts, or whatever you say, it interprets it and converts it to text. <coughs> John, just a question, because uh, I usually do the opposite. You recommend to do, on mobile app, to do the recommendations first. I usually do the descriptions. Uh, then I go with the recommendations along with my photos I take on a separate camera. Can you do a hybrid of that, or is it basically... A... You can do whatever you like. I, you know, and, and I'll, I'll just give you the reason why I go do recommendations first. Because right now, as we've walked around the exterior, and, and uh, on the roof, in your head, you already know what the roofing materials are and the exterior uh, uh, wall surfaces and the foundation, a little bit about the lot slope. You, you're processing that. You've got that in your head already. <laughs> if you're doing that at the beginning, have you already walked around the house and inside and out just to do your descriptions? So there, as far as a flow of process, if you're focusing on your description or your recommendations first, the recommendations at the end or the descriptions at the end will come really fast. Yeah, that I agree. Because <laughs> the other thing with the notes that you take down on that, you, the, you can see on a desktop you also have, do you put in also the, the direction, the floor level, room, task, time, and well, I don't usually put cost, but for those first four, 
Does it come out the same? Because you have that in their notes as far as that scripture. Because you put in uh, the cracked uh, uh, wall mm -hmm. north side, north side of the house. Mm -hmm. How's that going to appear in the final report? Because usually it has that. Does it appear as the same thing? Yeah. 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 So I mean, if I, I I'm going to I would defer to the pick list. Yeah. Because it's it's a lot faster to tap on something than to type in or dictate okay. a note. I just did it for effect. Okay. Thank you. Um, if, is there a place um, where if you just want to take some general pictures um, of the house to so you can remember all the finishes yep. and whatnot? Is there a place that you can easily go to that where it will make it part of the report? Good question. Mm -hmm. General. Exterior general. There's a uh, there's a spare section. I'm just going to hit back. Let's go back here. Uh, I'm going to go to the menu section uh, under roofing and under descriptions. There's a category called private notes. Private notes allow me to collect findings, comments, photos. It allows me to collect the data, but it does not appear in the report. So when I go into private notes, if I have stuff I just want to say and collect, but not use it in the report, I'm going to do it here, either as a blank item, or I've, got, I've already created some comments here for spare pictures that I just want to have on file, for example. Where are you heading for that? Roofing descriptions. Yeah. So you have descriptions. Private notes. Oh, private notes. Okay. Or even better. Private. Okay. So it's only under roofing description. It's only there. So you, if you want to have a, if you want to create a, create an item called exterior, called heating, called plumbing, and put uh, and group your notes and photos under that, private plumbing, and it would go right to that comment. So you can add your comments uh, that you don't want to appear in the report. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like for yeah. photos, for the, the main photo of the, the title page, mm -hmm. the first thing I do when I get to, to a, a site is I go exterior, general, and just put uh, exterior views, and I take a picture, and then when I go to sit at my computer laptop, I just click it on as a so That's another great way to do it. Title you page. might have some the title page. I just click on the title page, and, it, and I yeah. only do that when I go in there. If I'm doing something else with a photo, I know I need a photo of the title page. I'll just click that while I'm doing something else. Yeah, but even now, I just looked at this. I've never used this, but it, on this private notes, it shows <coughs> title page photo. Yeah, so we've added a couple items in there for you already. Yeah, so like the, the picture of the basement that's full of junk that you can't, you know, fully inspect. Yeah. You put that in there. I, I might put that in there or yeah, that'd probably be a good place for it. Yeah. That way again, I've got the picture, but it's not in my report. So that's a perfect place for it. And you're gonna get to know you, you've already you guys are already commenting on here's typical pictures I like to collect, but I don't want in the report. Put them on the private notes. Can you do private notes in each section? No, it just appeared it's just There's one it's just a repository. So it's only it's under roofing. roofing. It never appears in the report, but we need to put a field for it somewhere. Right, so I can't move to exterior and call it private notes. You don't have private notes under exterior. Okay, so it's yeah. only in roofing. Yeah. But if you did want to grab one of these photos, could you put it in the report? Yes. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's in the report, it says spare photos. It yeah. says spare, so I uncheck it and then apply somewhere else. Yeah, the X out spare and put it whatever you want. So let's cancel that search. We'll go back to our main list here. Do I have any other issues? So we're, we've, ex we've, ex uh, we've inspected the exterior of the house. Here's a couple <coughs> other issues. Um, reverse polarity of cracked tiles. So now we're inside. And I'm just going to do rev, pull. See, I can't type. Rev. So instead of typing out reverse polarity, I can just type in uh, the short form. Are the short forms in or do we have to learn them? No, it's just, uh, it just, the more you type, the more specific your results are. Just, it's just trying to convey that you don't have to type out the whole word. It's smart enough to pull most of it. Let's go ahead and add a photo. Zoom in on our item. So we've got our picture here of the reverse polarity. We'll use that. 
And again, walk around, identify the defect, take your photo, and move on. I'll save that. We'll talk about the cracked tile. Cracked tile. There we go, interior, countertops, no, ceramic tile on the floors, that's the one I want. Tap and hold. Let's do uh, add photo. See, I don't like to put, use the annotations here. Actually, if I'm taking a picture of something, I'm going to zero in on the defect anyways. So I really avoid using annotations. I know some people like to highlight that. Just preference. I figure if I'm taking a picture of this, I'm going to zero in on the cracked tile and not the whole room. Go ahead and use that. I think they can tell that it's in front of the toilet here. We're happy with that. We'll save it, move on. What else have we got? Here's that issue with storage. Everybody sees this at the garage or the basement. Can't inspect that place. I'm not moving that. I'm not going to break my neck trying to jump over it either. But I want to collect that. Let's just go back to private notes. Keep it in your pocket. That's right. <laughs> there we go. Notes recorded here, not the final report. I'll just tap that. I'll do, uh, let's add a photo. I'll use that picture. I'm going to add a note here just saying that storage in the garage. I've actually had that happen to me where I couldn't get to the electrical distribution panel. Right. And I brought it up to the, the buyer. And the buyer had me um, come back at a later date. Hmm at the cost of the seller. Yeah. So I had to recharge them to come back yep. because I couldn't get in the, and he goes, I want to see what's in the distribution panel. And, and it, the reason was it was an older home and there was some double taps in it. We'll do that as an added service. Sometimes we throw it in as a courtesy. If the basement is full, we can't inspect that area. We'll say, you know, we'll put that in our report. If you can't inspect something, make sure you're collecting those as limitations. Put it in your report. It's easy to overlook. <laughs> But it's, a, it's something to save, your, you know, save you down the road. That photo is going to save you down the road if you know, somebody called and said, you missed the tracks in that uh, garage wall. Darn sure I'm going to be pulling this up in court. Here's the picture that I have. But I probably want to mention that as well in the report. So I've got a photo of that. I've got it stored. Uh, at Carson Dunlop, we, we let them know that uh, if the basement's full, that we'll come and do that as a courtesy. If people are calling us for other things, we'll obviously charge for revisits. Depends on the situation, but that could be an added service. Okay, last one. What do we got here? Rust in the pile? Rust. Is there an issue? And it's the panel. Let's see, electrical panel. There we go. Rust or water in the panel. Defect, we'll select it. Oh, this time I, I didn't do a tap and hold, but I'll just tap this item. I'll tap it again to go into the note. I'm just going to say that this is in the basement. Maybe it's on the uh, south side. I can put a room, a task. So all that stuff you put in later. Typically I would. Yeah. I mean, you can put in as much as you, as you want. Some guys like to put in a location just to remind them, oh yeah, it was, you know, this is the orientation. And, but effectively, if I'm just focusing in and collecting my photos and my defects here, I can wrap, I can put in more detail when I'm writing the report. Mm -hmm. Let's hit next, add a photo. We'll go ahead and use that picture. Save 
save it and move on. John, just for your in your case, do you exclusively use your iPhone or you have an additional digital camera? Um, our, I'm not an inspector. Oh, okay. So that's why I'm not telling you how to inspect. All right. I'm a Horizon professional. <laughs> <laughs> so I know everything uh, I'll try this at home. Everything you need to about the program. Um, you know, my background is more in software and, uh, and systems. Uh, our inspectors will do both. Oh, they will so, do both. Yeah. yeah. Our inspectors still like to take their camera because that's what they've always done. Our inspectors started by using a checklist. So they will take their camera and a notepad and then at the end of the inspection, they'll do a data dump on their iPad through the browser. So some of them don't use the mobile app. Just not friendly for them. I will tell you probably 80% of the inspectors out there, um, last time I did a search in Verizon, about 80% of inspectors across the country use a mobile app on their inspection reports. Whether that's the uh, Android, Apple, or their laptop. Yeah. So a lot of people are using that on site to get their findings in there. And I mean, that's the goal. Let's get our information in. Um, we can polish it up and get the rest of the report out there. Only thing I had a problem one time, Mary will help me out, but when you go to your main uh, Horizon mobile web page and uh, it has multiple, like you may have four or five inspections, I pressed the wrong inspection, did the whole inspection and it had the wrong address. No. So remember, remember we yeah. had to go through that. So you make, sure you, make sure you're picking the right uh, item, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like sending an email. I wrote this great, great email. Oops, I sent it to the wrong person. <laughs> Just make sure you... Uh, I downloaded the wrong photos into the wrong report. That's right. I call it the opposite. You know, I can help you do to say that. Don't make it, don't press it live. Because I have an iPad, and I don't press it live to turn it, to turn it on the mobile app until I get to the site. That way, oh, I see what you're saying. You said Don't it. So think I the report writing. Yes, until you read it. I write. always do because I'm like, like if you do it in the morning, do all your free inspections you're gonna do, and they're all ready to write, and you hit the wrong one because your finger's too big. It only happened once to me. <laughs> it happens once to everybody. <laughs> it's one of those things, and that's good advice. That's part of that. We talked about that inspection process. Outside in, top down, whatever that might be, and don't open your report till you get there. A yeah, lot of times, you're gonna you're gonna pull up to that inspection early. You're gonna be sitting in your truck, looking at the house, and think, oh, I can do half my report right here, sitting in the truck. Yeah. That kind of comes to your point about putting in descriptions ahead of time. You can do you can do a lot of that earlier. Yeah. Or the site info. The only issue I have the same problem. I've done it a couple of times. So. But a lot of our properties are in the country. I get out there and I have no connection and not enough speed to download it. At that point, I have to go back to some place to, to get a good enough signal to download it. Well, you don't necessarily have, you can download it ahead of time. Maybe just don't open it till you get there. That way you're looking at, looking at what's on your list uh, on the home screen. The other thing is, if you're finished writing the report and you've published it, those will be removed off your mobile phone. Right. So try to clean that up. If you've got a list of five or six inspections on there, probably too many. You know, it's probably a couple days worth of inspections. Just do a sync to get rid of the published reports so you're not going back in and risking hitting the wrong button. But, you know, it still might happen from time to time. It's fat fingers and small devices. I've had that happen too. You get out in a remote area and you're you're on four. You're on four G, and it's like oh, this thing ain't working. It's not. It takes a while to update. So I got a hotspot. It helps it a little bit. I put. I plug a hotspot in my truck and put it on top of the roof. That's cool. <laughs> Can you There's always some way to skin a cat. Can you explain pushing the photos? Like we just took six photos there. Yep. We just took six photos. Um, so at this point, what I can do is hit the menu button. And in this case, I've got push only as my option. So remember we talked about full sync earlier? So push and pull. Push only is just one way. So I can hit push only. I like to, we used to say sync early, sync often. I still like to do that. Every five, 10 photos, 
comments, do a push. It just backs all that data. It's up on the cloud. So if this fell off the roof or dropped into that sump uh, tank, uh, pump tank or septic system, and I'm not getting it back, I can just jump over to my computer and finish it off. Do you have to, before you go out and inspection with this, you have to get report writing to activate this. Can you do that just from your phone, or do you always have to do that before? From you can browser? do it from your phone, but you have to I open did. up your browser. I did it earlier. Same thing. So you have to go into the work order. Go into the work order, hit report writing. Because I get that call from time to time. I opened up my app and I don't have my inspection. <laughs> Happens a lot. Just go in, go into a report, go into the work order, hit the right report button. You don't do that. Another one of those things that happens once. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, John. Yeah, the auto sync. You might want to mention that part too. Yeah. That's yeah. Auto -sync. New auto sync. It's new. Uh, it's, yeah, relatively new. Yeah. New in the past couple weeks. You want to talk about the auto sync? So, uh, with the auto sync turned on, as long as you have an internet connection, it's going to sync after every six entry. So after every six oh. item you select, it'll back that up in the cloud in the background. You don't actually have to click push only. I guess the key there is that it works if you have a, a decent internet connection. But where but if not, come here? So if it's uh, on the main, whole, the main menu. Yeah, John will show it. If we it go on. back to this screen here, the main screen with our inspections, and you hit menu, you'll see at the bottom, auto sync is on. Hmm. And how often wow. is that syncing your app? After every six data entry points. So it's not based on how many photos you take. It's based on how many items you click. So after you click six items, it'll push those six items in the so background back to the cloud. That's on. So that's working. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but if you have a slow connection, all of a sudden it's working and you can't do anything. Yeah. Well, no, you, it won't stop you from using the app. Like you can okay. still use the app. But it'll give you a still message. Push on. I don't have to still push on the you don't have to uh, push yeah, on. Yeah, definitely at the end of your inspection, yeah. you should definitely push. So you're doing better than I thought. Like, you're doing better. Well, you well, if out. the auto sync is working, I you and that. you can yeah. tell that I mean, based on how much you need. Yeah. Yeah. You can tell that based on your signal, like how it has the bars on the phone. It's how many bars do you need? I actually forgot that auto sync was 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 on. We added that feature recently. So you don't if have, you have like one bar you just you have auto sync on, it, but then if it's it doesn't go for it, it'll stop it after yeah, a little time. Yeah, if it's not showing up on there, you got to go back to your If it's not showing up on there, then you haven't updated the most recent version. Yeah, so go to the app store okay. and update Horizon mobile. Um, yeah, do you have one active? No, I don't have it. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. 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 I'm in Alaska, I get into places where I don't have anything, and I push sync, and I can't do anything. But it freezes up. Nothing. I can't. I can't write the report. So you had to shut. And I, I shut my phone off, and I yeah. and I turned it on again. And how recently has that happened? It hasn't happened recently. Because I know we, with this update and with other subsequent updates, we've really <laughs> been focusing in on the storage and the transition of data to and mitigate that, that to and minimize that it. So, um, you know, we're, we're always trying to improve on that because I'm aware there's also yeah, a timeout. Out. If you can't get a connection, it should time out just get you back to a working screen so you can sync later. So, the timeout I think is probably less than a minute. If you can't find a connection in 60 seconds, and I'm not, don't call me on that, it'll take you back. You're probably underneath the house, right? You know, I'm remote areas. Remote, area. remote area. There's, There's nothing. Like, There's nothing there. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, I didn't know about the auto sync. It's been doing it, but it's been bumping it out, and it hasn't locked up. So I think we're okay. So that's a thumbs up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my question is, should we still keep, even though it says auto sync, should you still keep pushing it? You don't have to. Like you don't, yeah, you don't earn if you do. Yes, yeah, so you don't have to as long as you have that connection. But at the very end, to sync the remaining data, because what if you have a couple left over within those six entries? So that's why you do a final push sync okay. to get to get it finished. But then after that, it's fine. Did they did yesterday. Uh, yeah, I'm missing a couple of photos. Let me push it again. Yeah, the push it. Uh, it popped up. Yeah, so it's, it's, there's a log file that goes back and sends <laughs> data to the website. So all of your text, regardless, all of your text gets backed up. So it might be a little redundant now that we have auto sync. Mobile logging probably not as uh, required anymore. It's kind of uh, built, built up, advanced. Diagnostic it sends a file to our developer if there's some problems, and uh, 
you talk to Ariel and Ariel says, open your phone and hit diagnostic, mm -hmm. it sends a little bit more data that we can do some investigation with. Because that's the, that's the hard thing. If there's a problem on your phone or on with your device or with the app, we want to try to zero in on is it Apple, is it Android, is it Horizon, is it the internet, is it me, is it you? <laughs> So, the inspector. And then once we can nice. that down, yeah. then we can solve the problem. So the more information we have, the better, the better it is. So when somebody calls in and says, is the internet slow? Or, you know, we, we often get these very generic, you know, I lost my information. Well, what information? On what device were you using? There's so much more in information we need. So we're looking for as much detail as we can here. Good one on auto sync though. I forgot about that, Ariel. So we backed up our information. We've got that out to the web. Uh, I've got a couple of other defects here about cracks and some rot. I can go on. I think you guys get the idea. If I can go in and select a defect, take a picture, go on to the next item, I'm pretty happy. So I've got all my walked around the house, outside, in, top down. I've got all my defects in there. I've just focused in on the recommendations. So back to that uh, speed write and required items. Now I've got to describe the house and put any of my inspection methods in. And let me just go back to that Delaware inspection. And I'm going to hit the menu button at the bottom. And we've got several options here. This one's called speed write. And speed write pulls up all my required items. All the descriptions and limitations Anything that I've flagged or made required, when I hit speed write, it just takes me to the top of the list. And in this case, uh, roofing descriptions for sloped roofing materials. And it's going to go through the list. Anything that's blank, it wants me to put something in there. So when I tap asphalt shingles, it's on to the next item. What type of roof did I have earlier? Asphalt shingles. Or the flat roof. The flat the roof? Yeah. Flat roof. Modified bitch. Modified bitch. We'll tap on that. Uh, how do we perform the inspection? Probably by walking on it. And then walking around the house, I've got aluminum gutters and downspouts. Um, I like to say, well, we'll just say that the downspouts were above grade. We saw that in our picture. So we can go through our required items. We're describing the, all the, everything we need in the report and auto advancing. No more navigating. That's the time killer. Everybody gets bogged down. Where do I find this stuff? Don't worry about that. Pull up speed right, and we'll say that the lot slopes uh, away from the building. The wall surfaces are, I'm going to turn off the auto advance because I want to do a couple selections because I know this is stucco and brick based on some of the pictures. As soon as I hit next, oh. the auto advance turns on. It gave me a little counter saying, hey, there's 55 items in there. It takes me five minutes to go through this list for 40 items. So a couple more minutes, so I've got 55 items right through that list. And I can go through this and tell them that I've got a basement, it's poured concrete, the floors are uh, joists, it's, uh, we'll say it's wood frame exterior wall construction, rafters and ceiling joints. These are all just descriptions. Do I have to put notes or photos here? Probably not. I just need to describe that for the client. What's the material? What's, yeah, the, what's the style type? Uh, roof space and attic. We all entered the attic or inspect it from the hatch or tell them there's no access. I know Alan likes to take a picture of the attic just to prove that you saw it, you looked at it. So we'll just say there's uh, inspected from the access hatch. I'm going to skip, just hit next because this house didn't have a crawl space. And then we're describing, we're already halfway through, we're describing our electrical system. My house, overhead copper, 100 amp service, breakers in the basement, grounding to the copper water pipe, auxiliary panel, I'm going to skip that, uh, distribution wire material, I know this is copper non-metallic sheathed. I'm going to turn off the auto advance because I like to tell the clients um, where my GFI receptacles are. I don't think that's part of the standards of practice, but I like to put it in there. Bathroom, kitchen, garage, <coughs> by my hot tub, and I'll hit next. Smoke detectors, yes. 
I can be more specific. I think we've added different types of smoke detectors recently. I'll just say that they're present. I think in California, you have to make sure that they're photo ion, uh, ionization type. Uh, uh, there's a style that's required in California. Anybody here from California? Is that true about photo uh, about smoke detectors? You have to identify. I have no idea. Okay. In, in Vermont, it is. They, they require photo electric. Right? So. They do. Yeah, it's a requirement. So if you if you're aware of that, you might want to include that in the report. Um, carbon monoxide grounding. Uh, I can skip that because we talked about where the grounding was. And now I'm describing my uh, heating system. I've got a furnace. It is gas. It is, uh, I've got ducts and registers. I'm not sure what the BTU is, but I'm sure it's uh, at least 150, and it is high efficiency. The main fuel shut off, I'm just going to say it's in the basement. And then we're on to fireplaces and stoves, chimney venting. Some of this stuff you have to include in your report, I think it's part of the standards. I don't know offhand whether some of this stuff is or not. <coughs> I'll just say it's a metal liner. We don't do safety devices. We don't do heat loss calculations. And uh, I'll just skip the. That's why you shouldn't put in BTU units. Because of heat loss calculation? Well, it's an indication of engineering. You don't know whether it's adequate. You're giving an in indication that it's 150,000 BTUs, therefore it's yeah. adequate to heat the house. Yeah. That's engineering. You but you're just reporting on what the boiler so it's <coughs> what the data plate says. It's the no reason to do it. No requirement. Yeah. So there's there's a balance of what is enough, what is too much or too little. So if you like to do that stuff, just to let your clients know whether it means I don't know if it means anything to a client. We have didn't to. mean that much to me. I don't know if 150 is how much better that is than 175 or less. That's or I might include a picture of the data plate somebody else mentioned. I mean, well, I or leave it at that. But you never know, and you never know if it's really 150,000 BTUs, what it's really giving if it's 12 years old. You know, so mm -hmm. you have to be careful there. Be careful. That's a good tip. <laughs> Not CYA. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so I think you're getting the idea of speed rate. I just went ahead and described that whole house. I'm on to the cooling section. I think I got cooling, plumbing, insulation left. Maybe the interior I got left. And I can go through the rest of those items in a couple of minutes. If I arrive early and I'm sitting in my truck, I can open up speed right and go through all the exterior and roofing items and describe that pretty quick. I know I'm still going to get up there on the roof with my ladder, but I can still tell them I'm going to do that and then put in my recommendations later, come back onto my truck, and fill in the rest of these descriptions limitations. How fast is this? If it takes me five minutes to go through 40 items or six minutes to go through 55, that's more than half my report done. I've already walked around the house just focused in on your recommendations. So here's where that, that system, that process really comes together, where that assembly line of focusing in on recommendations, defect photo, move on helps you start to streamline and start saving time. Horizon SpeedWrite and Bower Search will save clicks and get you there faster. The AutoSync is going to back you up online. And then when I go to the menu, I can either do a push only or I can rely on my AutoSync to back up that data. I'm just doing a push only because I want to see what it looks like on the web in a second here. Does the SpeedWrite only work on recommendations or work on description? SpeedWrite works on anything that you've indicated or flagged as a required item. So it's under your control. I've already preset them for descriptions and limitations because if you go through the actual standards of practice, it will then designate, describe this, you report this, and I flag those. And yours, the way you set it up out of the box, as you say, is based on the ASHI standards. It is based on the ASHI standards. But, this is my disclaimer, I set that up a while ago, and I know some things have changed in the ASHI standards, so you might want to review that. Open up a blank report, click required items, and you'll get the complete list of everything that's flagged as required, so you can see what's in the list. 
And then from there, you can optimize, add or remove things. So I'm back to the report. We've synced that. I know it's backed up on the cloud. Um, I can do more editing online. One last thing we talked about uh, earlier this morning was payment processing. And if I hit menu and I got the client there, maybe I want to get the uh, pay the invoice right here and there. Maybe they got a credit card sitting there. I can go ahead and pull up my credit card. Let's pull up this credit card. Let me go back to the menu, hit pay invoice, and it pulls up my camera. It should be pulling up my camera. There we go. So it's getting my invoice. So it knows how much this, uh, how much to process. And this might have some trouble because I may not have the invoice set up with any values. Um, there we go, 518. Do I want to scan that card? Yes. So you don't need to swipe anymore. Just take a picture of the card. There's some people get a little nervous about that. It's like, hey, you got a photo no, of I, I, No, a lot of people even... Maybe back in Vermont or Canada they do that. <laughs> we hear a lot of people do that, actually. A lot really? of them, you know, a lot of slip and let a lot of food carts, whatever, have that, so. Yeah, now you have a photo. I know, there we go. Uh, you don't keep the photo, no, you don't have the photo. It goes to the... Uh, so it's not, I'm not literally... You have the last, yeah, you have the last four digits that. of the account, of the, of the card number, that's all you have. So I can have that process and process automatically. The invoice is paid. If I had it turned on in my demo system, it would be my bank account already. You got a raise your prices. You don't have to take it back. <laughs> What's that? You don't have to take it back for the card for the, the three digits. I think there's a field. Uh, there might be a CVV field mm -hmm. where you could actually punch in the number, uh, but at least it gets the name and the number and the expiry date. Um, so I I haven't used it. Like I said, it's not set up on my account, so I'm not sure if it asks for the CVV number or not. If it's American Express, it's on the front of anyway. It's on the front? Who the heck uses that? I don't well, think it's set, set up a merchant account or yeah, and all that with your, uh, yeah. your uh, through, uh, Horizon in order to do that? So, uh, yes, you have to, you don't set the merchant account up with us. You go to your bank or a financial institution. Uh, at Carson Dunlop, we use Aaron out here with Guardian Financial. He's going to be out in the exhibit hall, and he's really good. He has very competitive rates. There's a monthly fee, and I think the monthly rate is around 1.69% compared with Square, that's about 2.75%. So the way uh, Aaron explained it to me is, if you're doing three or four credit card transactions a month, stick with Square and pay the two and three quarters. If you're doing more than that, go to uh, get a merchant account and uh, get better rates. We have, in Canada, we moved from our actual bank that we work with to Guardian Financial, and we got much better rates. He was, much, he was better, more competitive than our own bank. So we went with, uh, with there. So we're saving a lot of money uh, now, just with that move. So you like 90% credit card? Oh, most of it. Yeah, I'm gonna say higher. Yeah, at least 95. Yeah, 90 to 95. I don't need something. It's preference. It's an option. And it just streamlines the process. So, do you use? You guys take American Express? We do not. We just do Visa and Mastercard. I don't take American Express either because the charges. Are it's expensive. Expensive. They're not nearly as expensive as they used to be. It's great for you to use it for your business, though. You have kinds of points. If you find anyone that will take it. <laughs> so we've got, uh, we've got a few other things to move on to. I want to keep things moving along. Uh, there's some other features I want to show you. I want to move this back. So I've done everything I need to do on that inspection on the phone. Uh, anything else about the mobile app and inspecting on site that you want to cover? I think we went through a lot of examples about collecting photos and the recommendations. Can you cancel pictures on that? You can delete pictures. You can delete pictures. You can go in and delete pictures. So you can always go back on the phone. Sorry? On the phone? On the phone? Sure. You can go into an item anywhere that I've selected comments. Um, 
I can go in and select that inspected from, and if I have photos or notes, I can edit them from here or trash it. I usually like to just get everything here and polish it up on the browser or through the, uh, like I said, it's designed for data collection. We don't want to complicate things. We're not trying to change the world on this thing. We're just trying to make the inspection process uh, easier. Okay, let me get off of this. I've, uh, we've talked about the, the phone. We've collected a bunch of data. I've got it all online here. So if I pull up my browser, and we go to that inspection for Delaware, I've got my report information here. Here's all our content. Here's that title page photo, that little camera icon, telling me I've got a title page photo. First thing I'm going to do is go and edit this item and click uh, title page. Where are we going here? There we go. I'll just select this photo here, title page, and that is now set. If I've got other photos under this uh, section, I can deselect them if I want to apply them elsewhere. I'm going to save the close. Once you click that title page, you can't get it back. You can't change that. You can you can always you can go to do another item and click title page and it'll it'll swap. So whatever the last item is. We can preview this report. Let's see what our report looks like. First thing I'm going to do when I get home, now that my report's online, let's see what that boy looks like. Is anybody using the plain title page? It just says inspection report, it's all white, maybe just a color header and, and a yes, color footer? We do, we do. You guys do? Yeah, we do, yeah. All right. Should we upgrade? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. This, we've got 250 options that are okay. colorful, they're, they're formatted, the presentation. Remember, clients love this stuff. This makes you look professional. You can't preview it on the phone, right? Sure you can. You can preview it on the phone as well. But we've got, uh, this for this example, we're just previewing the title page and our photo. Uh, we've got our summary. I don't have to tell you folks about the tabs. They're all color-coded. I do like to mention that, again, going back to millennials, it's easy for them to open up this report and find stuff. I hate opening up my phone or my tablet if I have a book or an email that's really long, and I hate scrolling through that. I know other people do too. So if I can make it easy for them to jump to the electrical section and scan down the page to get information, I'm going to do that. Now, here I mentioned earlier, I like to put recommendations first. So we can actually, we can go in the back end and change this to say, you know, optimize it to whatever wording we want. But I want that first in the list, and I want to follow uh, descriptions and limitations to follow it. The presentation is a little nicer, so I will, I will go back and reorder that. Now you have to do that, or we can do that? Um, you can do that. So here's my preview. Let's go and do that right now. I'm going to close this one down. Um, let's go to profile. <clears throat> and under the uh, report config section, we have, beside my items, there's something here that says, uh, change the order and wording for descriptions, limitations, and recommendations. It's not necessarily obvious, but it's right there. So I'll just click that, and I'll hit the arrow to make recommendations first. So I can resort this. I can edit it and rename it if I want as well. This is instantaneous. As soon as I make that change and go back, it's it's in there. I saw that nine line, nine items. With, uh, what is it? First nine item. First nine item tab. Yeah. What is that? System tab. Good question. Um, if you have a lot of ancillary forms, if you're a commercial inspector, uh, I do have inspectors that do other inspection services, not home inspection. I can turn this off and it hides all the inspection tabs. So all the home systems, it hides those. So now that inspector can just focus in on his uh, pest or pool or whatever you know, gas, a guy that does gas station inspections. So it's tanks and pumps 
and pipes. <clears throat> so he doesn't need roofing well, exteriors. So it hides the first nine. All the first yeah. six. Six. Okay. Sorry, John, well, yeah, before I forget, you have a, you have a separate uh, template for commercial inspections, right? Yes. Which is an additional cost? There's an additional cost. We have commercial, we do have a commercial inspection form. Uh, Richard Weldon, he's doing a commercial course, I think, starting Thursday. And uh, he does a three-day course. It's not Alan Carson doing that? No, uh, Richard, Richard runs our commercial oh, division at, uh, at Carson Dunlop. So it's Carson Dunlop Weldon. And all the content in those commercial ancillaries are included, all of Richard's content. And so we would turn on that set of 11 or 12 tabs. And it's a one-time fee for $4.95 and it gets added onto your company. But that's, that's designed to conform to the ASTM 2018-E guideline. So it's, it's very specific. If you're doing large uh, commercial business, you want to probably look at that form. Is that, is that course available online or not? It is not. It is a class. It's a three-day class. Um, and there's a field component to that as well. Can you add? Uh, like in Florida, we have wind mitigation. Doesn't can, can we add a? I've tried. I can't figure out how to do a template like that would be set up that would meet the Florida standards for wind mitigation or four points or some of that stuff. I'm working on that right now as we speak. So we do have a form for four point, so you can collect all your data, and uh, we should have an output that meets the, uh, the the formatted guideline for four point and for wind mitigation. So I'm working on that. I'll be reaching out to everybody in Florida when they when you have that handy. Dan? Everybody knows that you can add tabs for mold, radon, and... So I, I can talk about ancillary forms. We do have other services, pool and spa, septic, uh, mold, radon. So if you want to collect that data, we uh, contact us, contact Ariel. Uh, we have a list in our help center of over 30 forms that you can add on as other, other services. So in Louisiana, they do this thing called relative elevation because they're below the below sea level. So they do some of those calculations. Uh, so there's a specific form for that. And we're adding more in there all the time. In the help center, where, how do you get to that? Uh, the help center is right at the top of Horizon screen. Click oh, help. Okay. And it opens up the Horizon Help Center Use the search and just type in ancillary. Okay. Um, how do you get off the web? If you want to just be doing a hard copy on your computer, if you record it, writing it, but you can't access your location, you can't access the web. So you've got no technology? Right. Then in the uh, Is there a actually on this screen here, we're in the profile. So Dave's question is, is I, have no, I have no computer, I have no mobile app, um, so you, you know, it mobile. broke, uh, there's no power, whatever the case is, you have no technology. Uh, we still have a checklist you can print out. And in the profile down at the bottom, we have a worksheet and a checklist. Just a paper document you can print out to collect your findings. Just a backup. Paper still probably the best backup there is. There's a lot of pages to that. Well, <laughs> there's one, one of these, the... Uh, the checklist is 30 pages long, and it's every single item in the Horizon database. So if you want to learn where all the things are, you can print out that checklist, and you'll have 6,000 items and comments, and you'll see how we group them. Some guys will use it just to go through the list and circle or highlight what they want, but that's 30 pages, so you've got pages for each system. But I can't. So my issue is, so... If I'm going off to my little country cabin and there's no electricity and there's no internet and there's no cell service, period, it's only 60 miles from Boston, and I do the inspection in the morning and I'm going up there, I want to write my report. Yeah. It's sitting in the comments 10 miles away. Can I write the report? Well, I mean, you're going to be able to put the report together, but everything's online. Um, if you want to write your report together, you might take your laptop with you and download and install Horizon Laptop. It gives you more control to put in photos, comments. You still can rely on the battery power that you have in that laptop and write your report. Um, but 
by doing this, by clicking the Horizon Checkpoints Download? This is a paper list. So this lets you write a report up and just have a paper list. If you want to put it in Horizon, you still have to transfer it from paper to, to the laptop at some point. Does and that make sense? You can go to the web to do that. Yeah. And then I can upload that as my report over what I've done. I am. By, well, you have to retype it in. Right? You've got it on paper. You still have to do the data entry in Horizon at some point. I see. So there's no transfer there. No. There's no, yeah, I don't do text to digital transfer. All right. So you can take all his data on his phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can. But, you know, if he's limited with power, this checklist is a backup emergency plan. Worst case scenario, print that off and keep a copy somewhere. The worksheet is a one pager or two pager. It's a ten pager. Yeah, it's, it's, every, that. it's a list of every system and uh, lets you collect your findings in, in a smaller document. So that's, that's helpful a little bit of backup. Notes with. Sorry? Uh, that's helpful to take notes with. Yeah, it's helpful to take notes with. A uh, couple of things, uh, since we're here in the profile, somebody <coughs> was asking earlier about my items. My items are all your custom comments. You start to build up a big library of those comments. And they're grouped by comments in each system. And if we go into the My Item section and add content, you've got your whole library here. So I can go in and edit any of my comments. Maybe I don't like to say this anymore. Maybe I've got a better way of saying it. I want to polish it off. Or I want to remove old stuff. If I want to go and review what's in another system, let's say the exterior section, uh, more comments that I've got here. Um, WDI damage, electrical. So you can see I've got a lot of comments. I can do all my editing here or even add new comments and build up my library and build up your library of personal stuff. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of limitations in here because we like to expand on the limitations, some verbiage sometimes. How do you add a PDF to a report? I'll get to that. Say, yeah, okay. I'll get to that. Yep. Is this for Carson Dunlop or is it for each individual inspector? Each of the, this is going to be your library. So you would have your own comments here. So if you have my items that you've made over the years, if you go to the profile and the my items section, they'll all be here. What I mean, in my company, would each inspector have their items? Or would it be It'd be company wide. Company wide. Company -wide. So that helps with that uh, consistency. As you build up my items, and with Mo's inspection, all the comments that you've collected over the years, all the inspectors have those available. <clears throat> so those aren't the notes that you, like, I start typing in my notes, and it pops up the last three or four items that I, I can click on. Yeah. That's not that. That's not that. What about templates? You have templates there. Templates are building blocks. So I can create, you can create a template for your company that has a collection of data. And has anybody used templates here? A few people? So you, you would create a, a content, and if I go back to the profile section, um, we have templates here. If I click on manage, these are a list of some of the ones I've created. Um, Something that describes a pre-1950s plumbing system, probably lead or, or cast material. It's got a collection of descriptions. And if I go into my report, I can select that template and it drops all those items into my report. So it drops in eight, nine items. It's a building block. So templates are handy. Uh, we have them at Carson Dunlop for wet basements, for knob and tube wiring. We have predetermined, uh, you know, these are the things I want my inspectors to say. So they can pull up that template, drop it in there, their base is covered. Everything we want to talk about wet basements is in there. And every inspector says it the same way every time because they're all using the same template. Uh, subdivision house, less than five years old. I built that to describe a uh, subdivision in my area uh, and it drops 90 things in that report. I click that button, that report's finished and done, with the exception of maybe a couple of recommendations. <coughs> so that's probably the extreme. I do have some inspectors that 
create a full report as a template, they apply it, and they remove the stuff out of it that's not needed. Usually for multi-unit condos. Sorry? Usually for multi-unit condos. You're not doing the exterior, you're not doing, just doing the, the interior. Yeah. So you set up a template for that. Not really. Um, for, for condos, uh, our templates are like building blocks. It drops things in to your report. Other templates create a mold and a kind of a, a format. And uh, if it's a condo, we're doing the inspection. We just simply ignore the roofing and the exterior tab because we're not inspecting there yeah. and focusing on the other systems. Remember, this is a smart system. If it's empty, if it's blank, it's not going to put it in your report. If I have no roofing data, I have no roofing section in my report at all. Can you just show us one of these? Can you preview one of these? Sure. So uh, let's take uh, pre-19, well, let's take the first one, pre-1950s plumbing. So I've gone into this report and I've selected, here we go, I've got uh, a summary item. So whenever I apply this template, it talks about, and it puts in the summary page, the uh, galvanized steel. If I go to the plumbing tab, it's got um, two recommendations about galvanized steel, about uh, crimped or damaged pipes. It's got uh, illustrations, and look at all the descriptions. So that gets, when I select it, all that stuff gets dropped in my report. Yeah. So I've got about 9, 10, 12 items that bang, that's a rubber stamp. And you have to re you know, review it for every specific report and make sure it's in all. Everybody previews the report before they send it, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> well, so because you build those templates, you know what's in there. And you know that if 90% of that I want, I'm going to go back it later and remove the stuff that I don't need. I, I like this idea about the condo, though, because, um, I mean, we're not inspecting the, the roof and the exterior, but don't you at least have to put those limitations in there that, hey, this is a condo, you know, not. You, you make a good point. I, I don't know from an inspector's perspective if there's no roof and exterior. Well, there's no structure. There's no structure allotted because you're doing the interiors. That's multi-unit. It's not a townhouse. Uh, yeah. It's not a townhouse. Yeah. It's multi-unit. So you're just doing the interiors. So basically, you have heating, plumbing, electrical, yeah. and uh, and if there's and usually if it's actually what we used to put is although the scope of the inspection was only for the interior, uh, if there's an exterior, just please consult with your home builder, uh, the, the the association. We used to put as a courtesy sagging lintels or yeah. non-safety glass. We don't put that anymore because our, uh, our, our insurance company says they're not reporting any of that. Because yeah. well, be like, since you reported, you might be, uh, anyways, well, I forgot how you put it, but we don't want to put it as a courtesy, saying that we see lintel rusting out or sagging. I will rely on you guys and defer to you guys on what you don't put into a condo report, but you can create a template of yeah. what you do want in that report by default. So you might have a whole list of limitations about condos. We don't do this, 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 or this. Bang, it goes in the report. As soon as I click it, it's in there. Hey, John, how long does it take your inspectors to do a report, average? Average, average across the board, an hour. <laughs> On the low end, 30 minutes. On the high end? I have a lot of inspectors doing 30 minute reports. On the high end, two hours, that's the post, post on a field. If you uh, take your phone and you focus in on recommendations and all your findings walking around the house, you're collecting that data as you go. So really, the amount of actual reporting time is very small. Defect photo, defect photo. And five minutes to put in descriptions and limitations. When I get home, how much time am I spending previewing and maybe polishing that up? So I'm at about the 30 minute mark. But also it took time also to set up, you also have the narratives that you've already set up, so basically that's the other thing. That there's oh, that's the goal. Cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you're going to refine narratives exactly. all the time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, how much, on average, once you have that set up, you should be, you can be in that 30 minute range. And, and, uh, and feel like a pre-50 is a home. Uh, as I presume maybe Toronto or Canadian, we have foundations in there and so on, and you have attic spaces, or attic, uh, attics to, to go into. 
How long is it? A two two hour inspection? Or? Well, now we're getting into all kinds of minor de de okay. details, we're right? We're talking about an talking average about home. Um, you know, when you start putting in a number of the more defects, the longer it's going to take. The older the home, the more defects you're going to have. So the larger the home, but on average, it's going to take uh, it's going to take an hour. I do have guys that will take longer because they like putting in a lot of photos or comments, or they're not as familiar. They haven't gone through this course and seen how effective. Uh, the mobile tool is, or they're scared of this. So I want to remove that fear. You know, don't be afraid. You can't break it unless you throw this on the ground. You can't break Horizon. So we have free training. So if you're new, we have personal training that we have. Brian on our team does personal one-on-one -on -one training. Walks you through how to do everything we did here with the mobile phone. How to customize and set up your system, how to work with uh, my items and templates. We do monthly webinars now. Everybody get the Horizon uh, monthly newsletter? Anybody not get it? Make sure, uh, are you guys on Facebook at all? No? Come and see me later or you know I'll get your email address and make sure you're on our list. Or check your junk mail because it might be going there. But we announce uh, our monthly um, you can sign up for the monthly webinars. We go through different sessions uh, each month um, to teach you, you know, talk about new features. Okay, so let me cross that preview down. Uh, that's a preview of the template. We made some changes to the uh, output. So if I go back into my report for Delaware and I preview this, this report now has recommendations first. Let's go to the exterior of the electrical section. So now it's easier for the client to say, okay, here's the problems. They can scan down on this easily. I got a lot of information fitting on this page. So I'm starting to remove my white space. A couple of things that are removing white space, putting recommendations first, taking photos in landscape mode, rather than portrait. If it was in portrait, it would be taller. It would push those items to the next page. Other illustrations. I've got a nice summary of my descriptions here. Let's jump over to, let's go to the roofing section. Again, recommendations, issue, photo, some notes, some photos, more recommendations, descriptions and limitations. So all that white space gets pushed down to the bottom. We like to keep all our systems isolated. We don't run on system, the systems don't run into each other. They're all separated by a page. So clients like reading that, getting those deficiencies first, and then the descriptions and limitations, that's just extra stuff at the end. How do you access the pictures? The illustrations come in automatically you know, for about a third of them. A lot of them you don't. If they don't, you can go in here on the website. This is a good question. Illustrations. The whole Illustrator Home Library is built into Verizon. So if I want to go in and uh, let's go to exterior descriptions, um, and I want something on, well, let me go back to roofing. Here we go. Uh, asphalt shingles. I'm going to go into the note. There's a button here that says illustrations at the top. And if I click this, I can search the illustration library if I have the illustration number, which is part of the illustrated home, or if I know the title name, I can type in roof styles. I've got something here. Let's go. Uh, <coughs> I'm just going to select a photo. So in this case, I'm just going to pick a photo here. I can click to add it to my report, and it'll be tied to that item. If I want that illustration to always appear, I just turn it on. So now every time I select that, uh, that recommendation or that item, it'll have a new photo or a new illustration part of it tied in there. If you have my items and you want to have our photos attached to your items. Perfect example how to do that. 
link up uh, our photos, our illustrations with your comments. Uh, on some of my reports, like if I'm inspecting a house and say I'm, I'm just in the garage and I need ground fault protected outlets and they're not, and I didn't get to the bathroom yet or anywhere else where ground fault protected outlets are needed, I click on that garage you know, and put ground fault protected outlets. It comes up with your illustration. If I go into the house and see the kitchen needs that, I click on that, but then I get double <coughs> illustrations in my report. I would go back to the first comment and just put in multiple locations. And then that will eliminate that. That way you've only got the item in once, mm -hmm. you've noted it in multiple rooms. And makes your it saves space on your report. You don't have to deselect or have repetitive illustrations. So yeah, just put in multiple locations. Pardon me? Then it wouldn't show on the kitchen page. Do you have a kitchen page? Mm -hmm. well, no, I don't write reports, so I think. You know, the, the defect is electrical defect, so it'll, it'll show up in the electrical section as being an electrical issue in the kitchen, bathroom, family room. So you're telling one person, you're showing that one defect in one place, even though it's in multiple places. Yeah. 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 And then, like, when you go to back to report this cover sheet, there's a section that says uh, edit illustrations. Yes. But not every illustration that's on that report is on it. Is that for? Every illustration in that report will be there, except for these ones. If you've manually entered an illustration, it, those will not appear there. The ones that you have clicked on. Yeah. Right? So let's do that. I'm just going to. We so talked about illustrations. Sorry, go ahead. So if you're one that comes up all the time, and then it's like a, one of those pictures of dance fans, and it just, I can't seem to get rid of it. Is it because it's clicked on and I have to click it off in manually? Any of the automated illustrations will come in automatically. So the downspots, for example. And there's no way to delete them if you don't want them? Yeah. You can delete them from the report publishing page, but you have to do it for every report. So if I go to report publishing, and I'm just using this as a same way to go to a couple of other features before we wrap up, I can click edit illustrations, and I've got every illustration that's automatically added to this report. So if there's some redundancy yeah, here, this one at the bottom. here's some overkill about the downspouts. I don't want to put that second one in there. Um, lintel sagging, I only need one. I'm just going to move this one here. Reverse polarity, I only need one. I'll get rid of the light bulb one. So, some of the, there might be some overkill. You can turn those illustrations off. And, one thing and save yourself some time and just save it. One thing that I've had to this, I didn't know, at first when I was doing it, I didn't know that some of them were safe because we have uh, multiple inspections, uh, inspectors. So when I add, uh, I would add uh, uh, illustrations, then when I preview it, see it double illustrations. Mm -hmm. So you always have to go back. I always go back to edit illustrations, and I always go through the, sometimes the, uh, mm -hmm. the new, then you come up W. Mm -hmm. A couple things to wrap up on. Um, report publishing, title page photo, ignore that. This is old and archaic. It's, uh, it only limits like a one megabyte file. If you add title page photos, from your report when you're from the photo gallery, you just click that title page link back in uh, the report. Use that option to add your title page photo. Don't use this one. Is that new recall check? Or is it? I don't see that. Token. If you subscribe to recall oh, okay. check and okay. you have that configured, oh, okay. you can export your data to recall check or to home binder. So it's listen three sixty. Third party partners. Listen three sixty comes up when you uh, when you when you uh, send the report before you. If you subscribe to listen three hundred and sixty again. If you're interested in learning more about this in 360, drop by the booth and talk to us. Um, it's something that Ariel configures for you and for your business, and then it gets added on and everything runs automatically. Uh, edit appendix. I wanted to come back to the appendix because uh, I had the question a few different times, how do I upload documents? If you have a PDF file or a JPEG, you can add it to your report appendix. This is your document library. <clears throat> If I go to this appendix, here's a library. I've uploaded 
smoke alarm information, um, standards of practice in Canada, a little document on reading the report. I can turn these on or off as I want. So I've got standard documents built into my library I can add if needed. If I have another file, I can just navigate to that PDF on my, on my uh, computer. Maybe it's a, uh, you know, a claim release, maybe it's a waiver, maybe it's a radon report. Select the file and upload it. And it gets dropped into the end of your report in an appendix. And it gets stored with that report file so you have all your records in one place. So it's one, Brilliant. one uh, this report only uh, up top and then for whatever you want in the future down yeah. below. That'd if I have right. documents that are reused over and over again, aluminum wiring, whatever, yeah. I'll just like add to this report. It's there. Perfect. But for the files you have to be a certain, under how many certain megabytes it gets? I think it's two and a half two megs. megs. Two and a half megs. Okay, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> There's an option including all future reports. Do I want this in every report moving forward? Sure. I can turn that on. Uh, appears in PDF report. This makes it visible or not visible. That's that option. If I'm uploading photos, that gives me the option to have it published with the report or not, or just store here. If I'm happy with that, I'll just hit back. The photo document section is a, is a big one. Um, we talked about third party services a little bit. Uh, recall check, home binder. Um, am I missing anybody here, Randall? Um, third party vendors? Yeah. Um, Listen 360? Uh, yeah, I, I have to check. It. It's, it's on the help center, but yeah. not that I can think of. I think that, that covers it. Re include reference library links. Amy was talking about the uh, digital home reference book, all that content. Just check that box. Every report will have that extra content. That's added value. You can mark it as a unique selling proposition to your customers and your agents. <clears throat> Everybody comfortable with versioning? That you know that you can create a summary only version of the report or a repair report of just recommendations? Show uh, bottom line summary only <coughs> or include recommendations only? If I check that box, only the recommendations print out. None of the descriptions and limitations. Call a repair report sometimes. But is that that's a separate uh, action? You, the, the realtor or the client can't get that from whoever you send it to. So once oh, you create, the, we send them the regular report. Yeah. And they don't have a place to go where they can only they can print that list. That's, cool. that's uh, the action list, which is a different product. So oh. let me let me go to the action list. Uh, I'm going to generate this report. It's a full report. I'm just going to click generate. And OK. Horizon's doing its magic, has that report ready, I can email that off. Down here at the bottom, there's a step six now. So I can send my client the full report, which is fine, but this link opens up the action list. This is what I give to real estate agents. Isn't that, isn't that uh, uh, if you get, uh, uh, if you get, uh, Authorization from the, from your client to provide to the to the. Uh... If uh, in this report it's just a summary of the recommendations and the findings, and in Canada, yes, you need permission. And uh, in the U.S., there's a lot of states where you don't. I mean, the, what the realtors are looking for is a list of the deficiencies, and uh, there's a, we don't do this in Canada. Yeah. So this is something that's it's very uh, it's very American. Yeah. Um, and, not, and not in all areas. But I can now send that link to an agent, and I'm just going to open up a new page here. And let's just paste it in there. So now the agent gets this screen that says, inspection address, inspected on date time, courtesy of my company. It's courtesy. I'm not taking any ownership of this, because from here on out, the agent has control whether to use this data so they can select it and create a report. Select an item, add or remove text, select an action and an amount, preview or publish. So they've got four steps to either take this information and select it, they can edit this comment to say this is the defect, the patch shingles, 
and the agent's going to say, well, you guys should repair that. And I want to include that picture there. So the agent is creating a repair list. So they go back and meet with the vendor. They're going to negotiate this. They're going to come back and negotiate. He's going to come back here, generate another report saying, well, they don't want to repair it, but they'll give you an allowance for, you know, uh, 500 bucks. And then they'll go to the next item. Do we you know, worry about the old rules? Sure, I'm going to select that. Action. Let's do another allowance. This is going to be three grand. So the whole roof needs to be replaced. I'll add that photo too. I'll skip these ones. You click uh, on the ones. photo red. Sorry? You just clicked on the photo red. Just click on it. So once you send this list to them, then they can play with it. No, they can play with it. That's right. They're going to say, Dennis is not a big issue. They're not going to select it or add it to the report. They're going to focus in on the big issues. You know, they're negotiating. Is that cracked brick an issue? Probably. That'll adjust the price. They can put in an allowance or tell them to fix it. But we have to teach them how to use this. That's pretty self-explanatory. There's four steps. We have a video. You can send. You have a video. There's a video in the health center, <coughs> isn't there, Eric? We have a video explaining this. Um. Yeah. Fractionless. So you can go in and send the agents a video saying, "Here's how it works. Go ahead and use it. And here's the link. Go ahead and use it." But this also, when you generate the report, you click. Can you go back to that first? To which section? When I generate when the report? Yeah, when we're Step six. to that page. Oh, yeah. Right there. So, so from here, all you're doing is taking that link. I can click copy link, and then I would send that link in an email to my agent. Just here, the, go or, or to the client if you want to. Well, it's probably the agents. If you could send it to anybody you want. Sometimes they're not represented. You know, yeah. If you want to, or whatever. Yeah. You can send it to the client if you want. They can see you have a separate list, but we, they've got your report. When we click send email above, that's the report, and then copy link. That's right. This this send email is for the inspection report. It drops in a link to the full report. Can we do that first, then that second? Yeah. Send this report to your client first. Come down here, send that link to your agent. <coughs> and we can open that just to review it ourselves before we send it. Yeah, sure, if you want. You know, we, we just did that. We went to copy the link, and we're playing around with this page. At the end, if I like this, I'll just publish. Okay, it creates a PDF report just like it does in Horizon, and I can download it, save it, copy the link, and send it to somebody else, or the agent can. Puts it in their hands. Mm -hmm. No liability for you, saving the agent time and effort. Agents like it, the ones that use it love this. I'll just say, I'll copy the link and then just put it in the body when I send out the reports. So I'm I'm wondering why it's yeah, I, I imagine there's no other ways to handle it. I, that's if you have other ways to manage it, uh, like other people can help uh, take advantage of. It's great. Go to the uh, our Facebook group in uh, her, in our Facebook group, our Horizon Facebook group. Those are the kind of suggestions that you can share with other people. Yeah. Is there? Mm -hmm. I guess that's just something you got to practice with, isn't it? I mean, you've gone over it. It looks pretty simple, but when I get away from here, cool. is there something I can look at it up again or just... The Help Center. Go to the Help Center or give us a call. So the Help Center has some videos that explain the action list, has videos you can send to agents to explain it to them. So we're trying to give you all the tools to maximize that. The Help Center is pretty powerful. Ariel's done a great job of combining uh, tutorials and videos and organizing that data so it's searchable, it's grouped, and uh, we're adding new content there all the time. The something is separate from this. I have looked, but I can't find how to adjust the body. When I generate a report, I want to change the language in the body part of that email. Yeah. I haven't been able to get back there to do that. I have to retype certain things in all the time. Um, is there a way to do that on the body, or? You can, you can do it right from the body or in the profile section. There's a place where you can 
make the default letter, change the default letter. Well, that's what I'm going to do. I just have yeah. to be able to find the place. Come by to the booth uh, later on. We'll, we can show you that. Um, I'm going to wrap up, guys, but I just want to say uh, thank you for joining me. Um, while we're here, come visit us at the booth. But we're also doing some, I'm uh, trying to get some testimonials from our users. So I encourage you to come drop by and uh, Ariel's got uh, uh, a camera set up there where we can get to collect a few testimonials. And I have uh, some nice thank you gifts uh, for doing that as well. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. I'm here, we're leaving Tuesday. Tuesday afternoon. This Tear down this Tuesday afternoon. Okay, so you're good. Okay, I click on my... Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you.